today on Living Streams. A misuse of single life will land in abuse of married life. God depends on your on a qualitative single life to give you marriage on time. When you don't use your single life well and on time, you will experience unnecessary delays. God depends on a qualitative single life to make a good marriage for you. And now to the word. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct. Some say direct. So when the heart is not ready, God cannot direct your path. God cannot direct you. How many of you would like God to direct you into his will for marriage for your life? Good. So your heart has to be prepared. Until your heart is ready, uh, you cannot be properly directed. How does God begin to direct your heart? The first thing he does is to teach you how to use your single life. Ask your neighbor, say, do you know how to use your single life? A misuse of single life will land in abuse of married life. A misuse of your single life will lead you into the abuse of your married life. People who don't know how to use their single life end up abusing their married life. In fact, there many people's married life are already messed up before they get married. Because the foundation for married life is single life. The foundation for married life is single life. That was why, you know, I'm talking some of the things I'm going to be talking now from my book, uh, Lord, I'm Still Single, Why? The reason why many people stay too long before they marry is because of the way they used their single life. They misused it. Now, God depends on your on a qualitative single life to give you marriage on time. Repeat. God depends on a qualitative single life to give you marriage on time. When your single life is not qualitative enough, you give God too much work to do. And God will work, but some of the things you are expecting from the way you use your life will make what you are expecting to come late. The Bible says somewhere in the psalm, it said they limited the Holy One of Israel. So your actions can limit God. God can be limited. It's a lie. We God, nothing is impossible. My brother, sister, nothing is impossible. But some things can take time. Because you limit him. So that is how you behave and God can be limited. You must understand that God is constantly at work in your life to bring you to where you ought to be. He's constantly at work. But there is how you behave and think spoil. How are we supposed to use our single life? What is the best use for single life? First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 32. But I will have you without carefulness, the he that is unmarried or he that is single, careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. How he may please the Lord. Ask your neighbor, do you know how to use your single life? <laughs> because God has prescriptions for every stage of life. For your single life, there's a prescription as to how to use it. It is to please the Lord. Verse 33. But he that is married, careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Now listen. How do you limit God? When as a single person, you are living as a married person, God is limited. And since it's a matter of choice, God cannot force you to do what you don't want to do. He will wait for you till you are willing to do what he wants you to do. I mean, if, you, God will not, if you go to your boyfriend's house now, go and sit down there. God will not God come and hold you by your attachment and say, you this girl. And hold you like this and say, I've warned you before, you don't want to hear. And go and drop you in the church. Come, stay there. God will not do that. God will allow you to finish your enjoyment you finish your enjoyment and you are like 30, 20. You say, oh God, God says, okay, you want now? Yeah, let's go, let's start. Then you now marry at 52. Why? Because you limited the Holy One of Israel. You limited him by the misuse of your single life. Single life has prescription. There is how to use it. Psalm 78. 
Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. You got a point now? So God can be limited. See it there. They tempted God and by so doing limited the Holy One of Israel. So when you limit God, God is limited in your life, not in somebody else's life. If there's any one message I've been trying to put across since Singles Frank Talk started since 2003, and since I began to minister to singles, I don't know when in my life, is to let you know that you cannot eat your cake and have it. God has rules. God has principles. Okay? The, why did God keep, why didn't God bring Adam a wife from the day one? Adam was what? Single. So, so what was he doing in his single life? You want to know? Was he having, you know how many of you know chambers can behave like human beings? So, it's, you know, Adam could have befriended one, the female one. I watched something on Facebook yesterday how a chimpanzee, there is a zoo. In some of these, they put the chimpanzees outside and put the zoo, attend, people who come to the zoo inside the thick glass. You know, they do it now in some zoo so you can see through the lion and anything can touch the glass, they can't break it, they can't reach you. So this chimpanzee spied into a woman's bag and saw banana and saw seven up and saw other things and told the woman, he called the woman, chimpanzee. Or is it monkey? Monkey. I don't know if it's monkey or it's a monkey. He called the woman. And pointed like this, not a joko. And the woman brought out a banana. He told the woman, I said, throw it. I said, is this a, I clean my eyes, is this a chimpanzee or what? <laughs> Who taught it first how to point? Then like this. Then he now told the woman to come and pointed again. She brought her the seven up. He told her. The woman went, he told her, pour it here. So she poured it and he drank from under. Then the woman went away. He went back again and told the woman. That's enough to, I mean, Adam, never seen any other person. That's, I mean, how are you? I said, oh, fine. Oh, friendship can start. I said, come. Are you understand what I'm talking about? So, single life is not, we have misconstrued everything. We have spoiled everything. So you spend your single life pursuing woman, uh, posing for man. Since you were 13 years old, all you are doing is how to, even when you are five years, you are playing house. You are the wife, your brother is the husband. Then you, you leave that one, then enter JSS one. And somebody like you, they send you notes, I like you. You self say, me too. Then you went to, then during break, you put a kiss behind the um, principal's office. Then you now continue. Then you now entered uh, GSS 3, the wars. Now you will you now meet under the mango tree near the cashew shop. Then you now continue from there, then in secondary school. So you see abuse or misuse of single life. You have been living, pursuing things that look like marriage, look like a boyfriend, girl meet boy, boy meet girl. Then you now finish by SS. Ah, it's over. So most people I have seen just wait to respect their father and mother. Let me just finish SSS, JS, I mean SS, um, um, SSCE. As they just finish, bam, they have disverged themselves. You know what I'm saying? They disverge. When you ask them, when did you lose your virginity? <laughs> As I finished school, school, around 16, 16 and a half. 50 and a half. And just looking at the person, you know, and after that, they just go like that. And they just keep going. And this person who is 16 now, expect that around 24, later, 25, or married. Who? Like with all these things you are carrying, how? Who does God hate to just carry you and punish them with you? You understand? Your life is a mess. Your life is a, you have, you, you don't, you, you have not had a single life. You've never been single. Am I making sense here today? You've not been single. How do you want to cross over? God depends on a qualitative single life to make a good marriage for you. And it's all about your choices. 
You've got to care for the things. Number one, why did God keep Adam single? So that Adam can fellowship with him long enough. Genesis 3, 8, God used to come down in the cool of the day to fellowship with Adam. He used to come down to fellowship two of them with Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. The Bible says Adam heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. He knew the voice of God. That's number two. God wanted Adam to know his voice. Number one is fellowship. Not so. You build fellowship with God. They say he cared for the things of the Lord. What are the things of the Lord? Fellowship. Fellowship with God. Fellow, the more you fellowship with God, the more like him you become. God wants to put his nature inside of you. Let me say this. If you are single and you don't have a prayer life, you have not tried. You are very wrong number. You should have a fellowship life with God. It should be an addiction. It should be the best thing in your life. I am saying because it happened to me. That was what God helped me to do. It was that's how to use your life. But all oh, many people single life, they used to fellowship with Tom, fellowship with Felicia, fellowship with, uh, um, you know, Franklin, fellowship with Mumu, fellowship with Order. When will you have fellowship with God? Uh -uh, single, I'm just imagining my single life. I had no woman to please. Yeah, there were times when we got close to people. There's a way you can be mentoring somebody. The person gets so close. And somebody tells you, I have lost problem. In fact, sometimes I feel like having sex. There is a man you see like that. The man says, eh, uh -uh, let's go and uh, <laughs> let's go and do it at once now. Don't need to feel like, just do it. And she said, you did not take advice because, I mean, there were all manner of things. There were people like counsel back then who would tell me I'm lost in. I said, hey, why are you lost in after? She said, say you. You know, that's enough to say, you're lost in after me. It's okay, not bad, let's go. And fulfill our lust. I had a commitment to God for daily fellowship. That was my commitment. To fellowship with him every day. So it was difficult for me to yield to some temptation. Even though it was there. Brothers, may a sister when they marry look back and thank you. That you didn't take advantage of them. Is somebody here I'm talking about? How are you using your single life? Are you using it to sponsor your loss? Or to sponsor your vision? To push your agenda that God has put in your spirit. We don't have many men marrying in their 20s again. How many of you notice that? Men now marry in their 30s, 40s. Some even want to marry 50 something. When you don't use your single life well and on time, you will experience unnecessary delays. When it's now, when they don't get to point, they now start to hurry and rush, and you begin to make all kinds of wrong moves. Some say, uh, but I'm not fornicating. I know you're not fornicating. But are you building fellowship? Because it's that fellowship, where you've built it to a point one, two, you now recognize the voice of God. You now know the voice. If God has not been speaking to you in your single life, what? throughout your single days what makes you think when it's time for marriage all of a sudden you will now know the voice of God and know the person you are supposed to marry is that how they used to do something ah, ah. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not true now if I was God all the way I would tell my son I want to teach my voice <laughs> Susie <laughs> my son I want to teach my voice <laughs> Evelyn now when he, when Wu Song has started holding you you now want to settle you now say, yes, Lord, 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 I want to. <laughs> My son, that course, I was trying to give you that course since. It's a six years course. Let's start now. Know my voice. Start from JS1. Let's go. But Lord, I'm 35. The Lord said, it doesn't matter. 41, I'll show you your wife. Let's be going. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Who has received wisdom today? I can't stop there. I can't stop there now. 
Because he's in Psalm 16 verse 11, he said, Thou will show unto me the path of life, my path of life. And in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So there is a path for your life. There is a path for your life. A path is not a way. A path is a road that can be traveled by only one person at a time. Hallelujah. Two people cannot walk in a path side by side. You gotta walk front, front and behind. He said, how will you show me? In your presence. Look, if you get used to God's presence, you would have taken care of many things about your life ahead of time. Many, many, many. And I'm not joking. I'm talking even including things in the future. There are things, there are quarters I enter today, places I am called to, to minister or something alongside certain persons, and I ask myself, when did I get here? I didn't get here yesterday. <laughs> it started from single life. How many of you know when you get married? And you have not mastered the art of God's presence. You have not mastered practicing the presence of God. There are many things you will not be able to. I mean, after that, you won't be able to get it again. It's difficult to get it in marriage. You can't learn how to. You can't build prayer life inside marriage. My brother, my sister, it's hard. It's hard. That's why I said a single man cared for the things of the Lord. So number one is fellowship. Number two is his voice. Recognize his voice. Number three is service. Service. Understand service to God. If you understand service to God, it is easy for God to service your life. Number, number, that's number three. I'll be on number four. Number three. Service to God. So what was Adam doing when he was single? What was he doing? The Bible said the first thing God gave to Adam was the garden. Turn the garden. Let's see Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. Was he married? Excuse me. Was he married? Excuse me. What? Which, which garden are you dressing and which garden are you keeping? Can I tell you an example of garden? One is somebody God wants you to disciple. When I came out of secondary school, I had only one desire. I cannot fall. Praise the Lord. Amen. I had only one desire. What was the desire? To just help people. I'm not joking. I didn't want to be a leader. I was a leader in school. I got born again. One year after, they made me fellowship president. Because of the way I grew. I grew like a, I don't know. <laughs> I grew I didn't know I was growing. People told me, nah, your own growth, now nah, what? I said, eh, I'm growing. They said, yes, you've grown very well. Eh. Honestly, I'm thinking, the guy who asked me that question is in the U.S. now. Very nice friend of mine. Evangelism was part of my consecrational life. If I don't evangelize, I can't pray. Some of you wonder why your prayer life is dry. You have, it's constipation. You receive, you receive. Pastor, preacher, hmm, chai, woo! <laughs> then you have never gone to the toilet. After a while, you won't feel like eating again. Everything will be doro in you. Yes, I have doro. Because you are not giving to anybody. You're not sharing with anybody. You're not winning any soul. You're not using it. So, you are never hungry. Never lose your hunger. Expend the energy. Whatever you receive, pour it out. When you don't evangelize. So I told him, I said, he said, I used to go alone. I would go alone. I did, I'm a man, I mean, so I, won't. so I would go and evangelize. I, I, my target was market because it wouldn't lack people in the market. So I would, I, 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 I would go to beer parlor. There was this beer parlor I went. I preached, preached, you know, finished, you know, went somewhere. I just kept going. One day he heard about it. He said he wants to come with me. I said, okay, let's go. So I, I went, I told him, when I quote a scripture, you read it. 
He kept following me. One day he got tired. How can I be reading scripture? Which I want to preach. So I entered the Kaikaukwa market. Bam. I wanted to preach to somebody. He left me up to pick somebody else. I don't know whether it was the Lord that led him or Satan that led him, but he went to the, oh, oh, they call that man Awong Bowo. That is the drunkest man in the market. He was a carpenter. He used to help people fix things in their shade, but he was, he was permanently drunk. You know, as in, so even me, I wouldn't have gone to preach to him because you need to preach to somebody who will understand. So he went. He didn't know. My mother had a shop in the market there. So I knew a bit of some things. I, I, he, the next thing he crossed, and I looked, he went to a one but I said, hell. <laughs> First time you want to try your hand, and this, this is the man you went to. By the time I finished preaching somewhere, I was passing, I heard the man telling him, preach to me, I preach to you. And if he preached to me, I preached to you. <laughs> so I saw him suffering. I passed. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't help him. So when I finished, he met me. He said, I said to him, how was it? He said, it wasn't nice at all. I said, I saw the man telling you, preach to me, I preached to you. <laughs> I told him, don't be discouraged. Next time you meet the right person. And he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't talk much. So that was a big frustration. But that was how we survived. If I went to prayer at any time and my prayer was dry, what have I done? Have I disobeyed God? Have I sinned? What have I done? Why is this prayer dry? How, how long I've been trying to connect? I'm not connecting. I will quickly remember, oh, I've not evangelized. Two weeks now. Hey, Father, sorry. I will go and evangelize. Immediately I finish. Fire will return to my prayer life. How many people today who are single have won a so No, I have won a lizard. I said, Lisa, do you love Jesus? You, people don't even try it. I'm telling you how to use your single life. Don't even try. Never preach to anybody. Every time you come to church, oh, Jesus. And I am, I'm desperate for you. After a while, you see them, they can't worship again. They have not expended what God has put onto them. He said, the things you've received of me among many with pass on to others. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. You are supposed to pass on what you have received to others. Let them get blessed and you come and receive more. This preaching, is it making sense? Service. What's other form of service? Service in the church. I'm talking about your personal life now to evangelize. Next is service in church. Get involved in a, in a department. That's your garden. Dress it and keep it for me. That's your garden. Dress it and keep it for me. You are in the sanctuary keepers. They say your own is to take care of the toilet. Uh, you know. Service. They ask you to be in the choir. Choir is your work. That's your garden. You will see. <laughs> for the God I have known over time. The, how well you perform in this garden. Tells what next he will assign you to do. As you pass this assignment. And you have a Accomplished it, he opens you to the next. All that is pushing you towards your marital destiny. I am not joking. Watch Adam. Adam did that garden very well. Then God now said one day, that, that was verse 15. By verse 18, it is not good for Adam to be alone. I will make for him and help meet. Why didn't he say it in verse 16? Why did he say it in verse 17? Because he needed to see how the man is managing the garden. Am I making sense? He put him there and watched him over time. He now came to a point. He now verse 18. This was verse 15. Now I said, it's not good. It's how I would have put it in my own. It's no longer good for the man to be alone. I will make for him and help me. Wow. Adam didn't hear. How many of you know Adam did not hear the discussion? Hello? How many of you know that when God had the discussion that said it's not good for the man to be alone, Adam did not hear it. How many of you know the day God decides you will get married, you will not hear, but it has been discussed. You will not hear. But you keep doing what you are doing. The thing about God is that once you outgrow a level, he won't keep you there, he will move you to the next level. So, verse 19, God now said, since Adam has been faithful in this one, uh, Adam, out of the ground, 
He said in verse 18, no good for a man to be alone. I thought from verse, verse 19, he will not bring the woman. It's the Bible says, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was his name. Huh? Whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name. He brought them to Adam. For the next level of assignment, he said to Adam, now you have been able to take care of plants that can't talk, that can't hear. I want to bring you now to the level of next creature that can talk, that can make sound and can hear. Now, I want to see how you will call them. So, God has apparently moved him from the garden stage to what? The animal stage. From plant husbandry to animal husbandry. Adam named them. God did a deal. He said, Adam, I will create your name. I create your name. Deal, deal. Adam was God as well. So I don't think he was just climbing. I think sometimes he would just jump and appear somewhere. He would enter the water. He would walk on the water. Adam walked on the water. How many of you know Adam walked on the water? <laughs> you want to know how I know he walked on the water? Jesus was called the last Adam. He walked on the water. He was doing everything that the first Adam was doing. So if as the last Adam he walked in the water, the first Adam also walked on the water. Adam was powerful. So Jesus came to show us the abilities and capabilities of the first Adam. Is somebody here I'm talking about? Adam only spoke to things. He only spoke to things. He will speak and that's the name. Speak, that's the name. When a storm rose, the last Adam said, peace be still. And he answered, as how Adam ruled, kings rule by words. They rule by decree. So Adam would decree a name and that's the name. He would decree and that's the name. He kept naming and, and each one he named God would say, that's the name in my mind. That's the name in my mind. Why, how did Adam get to the point of being able to get that accurate fellowship and recognizing his voice? Welcome back. Welcome back. I know for sure without a doubt that something new has happened to you. The word of God coming into your spirit has caused a transformation. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. And I'm sure by now you have, if, not the, if you don't have all the picture, you have a little idea of what is God's will for you now, what God wants you to do right now, and how you're supposed to go about it. So I want to welcome you. It's very important that you know no matter how hard you try, you can never walk in line with God's will until God is your father. He is a God to everybody, but he's not a father to everybody. Until Jesus comes into your life, marriage is difficult. Because, G you know, Paul said in the book of Ephesians, husbands love your wife as Christ loves the church. And wives submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. So until there is a relationship with the Lord, you can't do it as Christ or as unto the Lord. I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Your backslider, this is a good time to get restored. Very simple, pray this simple prayer with me and you will be saved. Close your eyes, put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I commit my entire existence to you. Write my name in the book of life. I vow to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, whether you feel it or not, a miracle of salvation has taken place. Locate the nearest living Bible teaching church. And if you are in New York, I welcome you to God's House of Refuge, number 80 Kodebido Street. If you are in Eket, locate any God's House of Refuge, anywhere Eket, Calabar, Ikotekwene, and so on. But if you don't have God's House of Refuge anywhere there, locate a solid Bible believing church and tell them I sent you. Settle down there, get pastored, and grow from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Till I come your way again, same station, same time next week. God bless you, and have a great time.